Hi there, my name is Kendrick, and in this video, you're going to learn how the sexual modalities work in the objective personality system. So what is sexual modalities? In the objective personality system, you have your original 16 personality types. Each of those 16 personality types actually has 128 variations. The variations include jumper types, and that's when one of the original 16 personality types jumps over their second cognitive function and goes directly to their third cognitive function. As well, there is also the animal stack, which adds another eight different variations to each type as a result of different function combination usage. Most recently, four different social types has been added as well. And finally, there is four different sexual modalities. So as a result, not only is there 128 variations for each type, there is actually a total of 2,048 different personality types under the OPS system. In this video specifically, you will learn the four different sexual modalities which influences someone's learning style, memory, and polarity of their cognitive functions and animals. Let's start off with the learning styles and memory. The four different sexual modalities are audio, which is learning through hearing and memory through auditory channels. You become an audio kinesthetic if you have a masculine sensory function, either SI or SE, and feminine tribe functions, which is either TE or FE. Kinesthetic is learning through movement and physical activity, and their memory relies on weight, touch, and movement. You become kinesthetic audio when you have a masculine sensory function, which is SI or SE, and masculine tribe function, which is TE or FE. Visual is learning through sight and memory through visualization. You become a visual and tester if you have a feminine sensory function, which is either SI or SE, and a masculine tribe function, which is either TE or FE. Tester is learning through smell and taste, and smells bring back memories and emotions. You become a tester visual if you have a feminine sensory function, SI or SE, and a feminine tribe function, which is either TE or FE. This also also affects your cognitive functions because it creates a polarity between opposite functions. Sensory and intuition functions are opposites. So if you have masculine sensory, then automatically your intuition becomes feminine and vice versa, where if you have a feminine sensory, then you automatically have masculine intuition. Your tribe and identity functions are opposites. So if you have a masculine tribe function, then automatically your identity function becomes feminine and vice versa, where if you have a feminine tribe function, then you automatically have a masculine identity function. When a function is masculine, it means it's more confident, has a better memory, it's more punchy, and more rigid. When a function is feminine, it means it's more insecure, forgetful, and flexible. This means for the tribe and identity functions, the masculine one will be perceived as a threat, while the feminine one will be perceived as non-threatening. So for someone that has masculine TE or FE, they will perceive the tribe as threatening when in fact, they are the one that's being aggressive. When someone has masculine TI or FI, they perceive themselves as the threat. So they act more flexible towards others as they believe that other people can't handle their true selves. Let's look at the difference between the eight different cognitive functions based on their sexual polarities. The Karen archetype is a good example of someone that has feminine TI or FI thinking they are vulnerable and weak and act aggressively towards the tribe with their masculine TE or FE as they genuinely believe that other people are being aggressive towards them when they are the ones acting insane. Someone with feminine TI and FI also have more identity crisis because they can never quite grasp and solidify who they really are. Someone with feminine TI will have trouble with truths as truths are flexible to them. While someone with feminine FI can come across very FE-like because their emotions are easily triggered and show up on the surface as they laugh and cry much easier as an example. Their inner value system also becomes flexible and it may seem like they are betraying themselves when really they are not set on what character trait they really want to embody. On the positive side, those with feminine identity identity functions can pick and choose their identity to what will help them achieve their goals. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger chose to be an entrepreneur, a bodybuilder, an actor, and a politician, and this was all done through the choice of his feminine FI. Someone with masculine TI will come across as more argumentative because to them, their truth is solid. They then have trouble coming across as being 
wrong. Someone with masculine FI is also more aggressive with their value system and if the tribe is using FE to try and get them to adhere to what the group's social value is, you will see the masculine FI individual rebel against what is seen as socially accepted if they don't resonate with it. On the positive side, those with masculine TI and FI are more stable internally and rarely do they have an identity crisis unless they are an EJ archetype having their identity function at the very bottom of their function stack. Someone with feminine TE and FE will be more flexible and can come across as submissive towards the tribe because they don't care to fight and argue unless their masculine TI or FI gets triggered. The social type also plays a huge role into this. Those with masculine TE will be more aggressive at pointing out to the tribe at what works which can feel very invasive and frustrating to those that has introverted thinking. The same goes with masculine FE which aggressively tells the tribe the proper social etiquette they must adhere to and behaviors that are more socially accepted. This will come across as invasive and annoying to those that has introverted feeling. Someone with feminine SI and SE are more forgetful with the facts, numbers, and details while those with masculine SI and SE will have a very good memory remembering facts, numbers, and details. Feminine SI and SE don't see the physical world as a threat and can navigate whatever happens with more finesse unless they have it as their fourth function like INTJs and INFJs. Those with masculine SI and SE are more punchy with the physical world and are more likely to throw things, hit things, smash things, or grab things. Finally, those with feminine NI and NE are more forgetful with patterns, concepts, and pathways while those with masculine NI and NE feel very confident when it comes to patterns, pathways, and have a good memory of concepts. This can be a double-edged sword as those with masculine NI and NE can feel very sure they are going towards the right path in life and if they're lucky and the environment is aligned with their goals, then they will come across as someone that has amazing foresight. However, those with feminine NI and NE are more flexible with the pathway they use to achieve their goals and are more flexible to the environmental conditions to make changes to their plans. So in conclusion, the sexual modalities creates a huge difference between the 16 original MBTI personality types. That's why you can't say anecdotal things taken from the old Myers-Briggs system such as, oh, this person is very aggressive, very bossy, and they are definitely the evil CEO type, which means they must be an ENTJ. Because yes, an ENTJ can embody all those behaviors if they are a social type one, double masculine ENTJ. But then you get that double feminine social type number four ENTJ, who is super friendly and nice to everyone, at least on the surface, because deep down inside, they still have that masculine FI. So they are not going to come across as the traditional evil CEO ENTJ. And you'll probably think they are another type, when in fact, they are also an ENTJ because they share the same problem as that quote unquote evil double masculine social type number one ENTJ, which is they both have that FI at the bottom. So identity is still going to be the biggest problem for them as well as people problems. And of course, this applies to the other types as well. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.